Hello and welcome to Encore. Coming up in today's music show, we receive some postcards from Paradise, the new release from former Beatle Ringo Starr. We take a look at male-female equality when it comes to music festivals, as we ask why there are plenty of women in the audience, but fewer on stage. And we're joined in the studio by French singer-songwriter Jeanne Adède. She's here to tell us about her classical pop crossover. Hello, Jeanne. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello. And, of course, I'm joined, as ever, by Mariam Saab, our music critic, who'll be taking us through this week's music news. Jeanne, I wanted to start off with your new album, Be Sensational. Definitely sounds like a pop record with shades of electro and rock. As one of France's new generation of pop artists, who are your references or your heroes from the genre? Uh, well, uh, lately I've been listening to a lot of... Um Liars, uh, these new Puritans, earlier Peaches, lots of Justin Timberlake <laughs> a few years ago. Um, yeah. So mainly modern stuff then? Yeah, modern, and that's quite various. Uh huh. Well, going back to uh, perhaps one of the more classical pop uh, bands, arguably the most famous, the Beatles. Uh, former Beatles member Ringo Starr, he's got a new release coming out. A new album he made with a little help from his friends. Yes, he's been sharing studio time with the likes of Dave Stewart of the Eurythmics and guitarist Joe Walsh of the Beatles. And Ringo Starr gives a nod to the past with his retro follow up to Ringo 2012 and Why Not. Now it starts in Liverpool with uh, Rory and the Hurricanes with Star singing I was with You Know Who and You Know Who of course is one of the first of many references to the Beatles. Now for me there are one too many reggae and blues uh, jams on this record. It feels a little bit dated but it all comes together with postcards from Paradise uh, a song composed almost entirely of Beatles song titles which is very interesting. Now he'll have another Beatles moment in a couple of weeks. He's going to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame by Paul McCartney and he's the last member of the Beatles to receive such an honour. So it's about time. Good for Ringo Starr there. Now, Jan, as we said, we were talking about the fact that your pop sound, um, this record sounds very poppy, but mm. that's quite new for you. You come from a classical background, classically trained as a cellist and a vocalist. How does that feed into the way you make music? Well, uh, I've been listening to pop and rock music for as long as I can remember, so uh, it does fit right in. And... Um, and yes, well, it took me a long time because I used to sing uh, other people's music and then, and then I got fed up of that and I really needed to do my own stuff. And when I finally asked myself this question, all that came up, all that came up in my head was uh, rock sounds and pop music and, and uh, a way to use my voice, which was nothing, nothing like uh, what I was doing until then so so it qu happened quite naturally quite yep. an organic process mm -hmm. now um you've got plenty of festival dates coming up this summer as part okay. of your door tour and you've been recently involved in les femmes sans mel that's a festival here in paris that's mm -hmm. focused solely on female talent now we went to check it out and to ask why female artists are struggling to break into music festivals Singers like Beyoncé and Taylor Swift might make millions of euros, but there aren't too many of them on festival programmes. Our reporter Mark Thompson went to investigate. With the doors not yet open, fans queue impatiently outside. Tonight is a sellout. The star, 26-year-old Australian Courtney Barnett. Her performance, just one of almost 50 shows taking place across 29 French cities as part of Les Femmes Sans Mel, a festival dedicated to giving female musicians a platform. Hopefully with more female musicians and, and, um, and you know, the spotlight on more of them, it inspires more, you know, younger women to, to make more music and not make it seem like such a... Um, a rare um, thing. <laughs> Courtney's hoping to follow in the footsteps of award-winning artists such as Christine and the Queens, MIA and Regina Spector, who've also played the event. But female artists are still being regularly dwarfed by their male counterparts, even at the more eclectic and mainstream festivals. 
something that's not gone unnoticed by fans on social networks who have pointed out the phenomenon by showing lineups with and without all male groups, a glaring imbalance which occurs throughout the industry. When you're a girl, you're surrounded by men all the time. Uh, when you do the business from the record company, the sound engineers, the technicians in the, in the clubs or in the festivals, so it's a very masculine world. Rock on Seine in Paris is regularly among the festivals with the highest rate of female artists. But even it has only had three headlining acts with female musicians in its 13-year history. I found that the most important thing for a music festival, and for Rock en Seine too, is to respond to the times and to be with the times. The idea is to always, always have the most exciting groups of the moment. Courtney Barnett hopes to be among them, and she's made a good start. Her debut album is near the top of the UK charts in its first week. The summer will tell whether that translates into festival appearances. As we can see from that report, there are still many challenges facing women in music today. As somebody with an all-female backing band, what are some of the obstacles that you face? Well, uh, I'm being very lucky right now. Everything work is working really well. Uh, so um, I, I would know, but uh, as we can see in the, in this piece, uh, it takes it takes. Um, Volonté. It takes, it takes a, a lot of will. It takes yeah. a will from from uh, people from the the festivals to to uh, to announce female artists. It's uh, it's it does not come naturally. Mm -hmm. And as we saw, Rock on Sun, they've had fairly few. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to be about to change. No. <laughs> well, let's indeed. We spoke about your all female backing band. Let's take a look at some of Jeanne's music with this clip. This is War Is Coming. And we're stuck here, here with our many pains, with our letters, hearts once open and now closing down. They want to get even, want the joker, one threat is smearing all over me. No one to notice, recognize me, no call for an all, and can wash it all away. For here we must be, for here we must stay. Always, I try always to disappear, it's not enough to die. Now, War is Coming, what's the message behind that song? Is it a prophecy? Well, uh, it's not. Uh, war is here already, so I'm a bit late, actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, now it's, tell it's telling um, how you can be stuck in your head and uh, how the world is big outside and you should just get out and, um, yeah, get out of oneself and just not, not uh, keep, uh, stay stuck in oneself and... Uh, and try and go and see the world and people around. So it's an internal conflict there. Now, Mariam, we're finishing off with some news from Pulp. Uh, Life, Death and Supermarkets. That's the title of a documentary about the legendary Britpop band. It takes us back to Pulp's roots in Sheffield. How does that work? That was directed by Florian Habich. The film takes us back as you said, to Sheffield, where it all began, uh, following the band as they come full circle, uh, playing their 2012 hometown show in Sheffield, north of England. It was the last stop on their UK reunion tour. Now, the tour actually ended a nine-year hiatus. Now, in a France 24 exclusive, Jarvis Crocker plays the first song he ever wrote and reflects on a lifetime of music making. Some people watching the telly. Some people be going and scoring some tricks. Playing like children, our last time fortune's full. I said Shakespeare makes me sick. She said, our last poor your rick. Shakespeare rock, Shakespeare roll, Shakespeare rock, Shakespeare roll. People say that the music business is dead and all this kind of thing, but making music. Apart from any financial things, which I think you have to put out of your mind anyway, if you can do it and get pleasure from it, it's, there's not much to beat it, really, because you can really escape. It's a good escape. You just, when you're playing something and you're really enjoying it and you get into it, 
you, your surroundings and everything just just melt away, and I think you're kind of tapping into something quite primal, really. So, yeah, it's it's good. Well, we'll leave you with a clip of that film. Remember, you can get more news on our website. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. It just seemed logical that you would do this thing and then you would finish in the place where it all started. I think it was good that we left Sheffield last and we'll give the story a happy ending. Reporters. San Cristobal, Western Venezuela. For over a year, protests frequently flare up against Nicolas Maduro's government. Students occupy the university, and the battle between Chavista and the opposition has exacerbated the economic crisis. Unprecedented inflation, food shortages, illegal trafficking, and the lack of security have brought the country to the brink. Two years after the death of Hugo Chavez, why has San Cristobal, the rebel city, come to symbolize the deep division in Venezuela? Reporters on France 24 and France24.com.